All right, so for the last day of our class, we've got uh, a few more things to, to work on. Some things regarding plugins, a little bit of advanced editing, <coughs> themes, and then deployment to a real site. Now, we've covered a lot of ground from the beginning of the class of basic WordPress to intermediate. We'll cover a little bit of advanced stuff. Um, so, um, what, we'll, what we'll talk about... Yes? Okay, I need to get started now, but uh, let me help you in just a moment. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to the dashboard uh, and let's go look at our plugins. These are the plugins that I've been mentioning before, and as a quick recap, um, it's in the notes, I'm sure, on a previous day, but I'll make notes again here. These are the these are some of the plugins that we've got, and I'll explain again what they what they are. And we'll talk about some new plugins that are useful. So we've got Akismet, basically spam preventer. Is that a word? Preventer. Spam preventer. It prevents spam. It helps you fight spam. We've got uh, Duplicator. We should know what that is by now. So that's Backups. I'm going to say it's Backups and Migration. Because this allows you to move your site from one location to another. So when we are finished with the day and we talk about moving it over to Bluehost, for example, Duplicator is still what we need to use. Uh, we've got redirection. This one helps you with broken links. Let's say we created a, a page called About Us, and it was named the slug. The address was about-us, and I decide to change it in the future simply to about. You're going to get broken links because things might have been pointing over to the about-us link, and now you've moved it to about. Internally, WordPress probably will not have a problem. It can change your links very, very easily. I'm saying that if you posted on Facebook or on someone else's website a link back to your site and you changed your link, that link is going to be broken. Redirection will help you identify and fix those broken links. Yes, just uh, looking at it briefly, it's under settings. Uh, where do they put it? No, under tools. Under tools, redirection. So, tools redirection. If you go to 404s, this will tell you all the broken links. They should just simply call it broken links, but technically they're called 404s, file not founds files not found, and um, it would list all your broken links. No broken links because it's not a real site, no one is accessing it. But they would all be listed here, and then you would select the broken link and correct it, and they would all be listed under redirects. So it doesn't do it for you because it doesn't quite know what you want. But it's found all under this screen here. We've then got uh, WP Commerce, of course we know what that is, uh, and then Yoast SEO. This one is uh, this one is for um, optimizing for SEO. That's when we wrote our descriptions for our products and uh, thinking about keywords and all of that. I think we'll touch on that one a little bit more in just a moment. But uh, two more, or uh, at least yeah, two more, that we'll add. First we'll start with um, Contact Form 7. This is a, a very cool and powerful contact form creation tool. Uh, this is for creating 
multiple contact forms. Meaning you can have different contact forms on different screens of your website, collecting different things. So if someone wants to get in touch with you and ask you a question, or if someone is requesting a quote, or other sorts of information, you can have different forms. Not forums, forms. And uh, you can have autoresponders. That's when someone emails you and it responds right away. It says, thank you for contacting us. We'll be back with, with you in, in, in about 24 hours. Feel free to check our Frequently Asked Questions page in the meantime. And then Jetpack. So it's, I'll call it the Swiss Army Knife plugin. It has many sort of sub-plugins, extra features. If you've used WordPress.com, it has a lot of great features. Social sharing, for example. But when you get your own WordPress.org version of your site, it's missing a lot of features. You can easily activate them, again, with Jetpack. It needs a little bit of a setup, which we'll talk about in a moment, however. So these are sort of like the plugins that I install right away for clients because they're so useful. Most of these are free to start off with and use most of their features, but then some have a couple of extra things like Duplicator. It, it's a, there's a more powerful version if you, I think it's $40 if you go for that one, it has more features. Uh, but all these other ones, well Yoast also, it's got, the, like they'll analyze your site more completely if you get the paid version, but all the free versions will get you pretty far. For a Kismet, it only is free if you're doing it on the personal site. If you're making money on your site, then it wants the annual subscription, I think. I think they're, um, that one's an interesting one because they, uh, they highly recommend you, for various reasons, perhaps to donate and such. And uh, you can be donating like as little as a dollar a month. Uh, you know, twelve dollars a year. So it's up to you, basically, to some degree, to how much you want to pay them. But technically, yes, the the one that they give you for non-commercial purposes uh, is is free. But uh, if you're doing commercial purposes and you're making a little money, you might kick them twelve dollars a year and feel good about yourself, and also help uh, in the development of the project. When I was asking about the charges, the charges to add plugins like this. Oh, um, no, like in my own, if I were being hired uh, for a client, this would be part of the whole process and the whole contract of whatever we've decided. So I would tell them, however, if you want more features, if you need more power, this one's an extra cost, but not to me, over to the original company. So they put in their credit card info and then they are charged. So let's, uh, let's add contact form 7. Let's see how that works. I'm under the plugins screen. And we'll click add new. And in this Add New screen, on the right side, we'll click Search Plugins. And we'll search for Contact Form 7. And then press Enter. If you want to search, you'll get a bunch of results, 2,000 results. But the one that uh, the correct one should be the one Contact Form 7 picture of Mount Fuji by Takayuki Yoshi. This is the author of this plugin, very highly rated and used, compatible with our current version and very recently updated. So again, if it's the criteria of using a good plugin, it's got lots of installs, lots of ratings, updated <coughs> recently, is it compatible with our version? Um, you can of course use plugins that don't fit all four of, the, of that criteria, but you may have trouble, especially compatibility. So you want to click Install Now.
install now. Remember to click activate. Click activate or it won't do anything. And after you activate it, you have a brand new icon on the left side here. Contact. You get the little envelope, contact, contact form, add new, integration. Uh, I believe there's already one built in. Let's look at contact and then contact forms. Yeah, there's already one built in. So there's already a contact form one. We'll ignore that one for the moment. The way this works is you can create and use multiple contact forms. Uh, you, you apply the contact form kind of in an old school way uh, in that you use a short code. So you see this contact form that was already created, you can use it on any of your pages or posts or products by copying this line of code and pasting it onto the page that you want. This is pretty common. I think they will make it a little bit more user-friendly in the future. Not just on this plugin. Many plugins do this. It'll say, okay, here's the short code. What you do with the short code is you copy it and paste it into your page, and then it and then it sorts of, you know, plugs it in. Whereas other plugins might have a button that you click and then it inserts. This one, this version here, you copy this code, paste it where you need it, and then it and then it creates the form there. It adds the form, that is. You create the form here and then you add it as we'll see in, in a moment. Let's say there's already one that's created. I'm going to ignore it for the moment. Uh, but notice here, we've got contact form needs your support. Uh, so this is real people, not big old companies making these things. Someone out of their spare time creating these plugins. And oftentimes they ask for donations and any amount will, will work, but let's say do you really need a whole month's worth of lattes? You know, you add up those four and five dollar uh, cups and maybe save up a little bit and pay for some of these or donate for some of these authors. And here you've also got how it works and um, setting it up and all of this info. But at the top, you should see contact forms, add new. So click add new. It needs a title, so we'll call this main contact. I'll click save on the right. These can be called whatever you want, of course, because I'm thinking I'm going to have a main contact form. I'm going to have a sort of like a maybe request a quote or maybe a catering form. I can have multiple forms, so we should name them accordingly. Below it, it says, copy this short code and paste it into your post page or text widget content. Yes? Are you sure you got contact form 7? If you didn't get that one, then it's a... Yeah, this And so the way this works is then you've got these tabs, form, mail, messages, additional settings. And uh, this is a very popular contact form, but it's still kind of old school in that, uh, look at what we have here. It's not like a drag and drop, drag this field and drag this box and drag a button. It's still relying a little bit on, on code. So what we're looking at here, there's a paragraph, that's the P tag, there's a paragraph that says, your name, required and then some code that says text your name. Then there's another paragraph that says your email required. 
and then a code email your email so we can ask for people to fill in a text <coughs> field an email field a text area and all of these are coming from up here asking for a text fill in some text like one line of text your name fill in your email so it's going to be assuming you're filling in an email add your telephone number so there's a telephone tag here <coughs> add a number or date etc and then at the bottom there's a submit button let's say we are also asking for the person to put in their uh, their phone number so we're asking for their name their email a subject of their email their actual message let's say we're also gonna ask for their telephone number right before subject so based on what's already here we can kinda of figure out what we need to do so click between the lines of your email and subject right there and press press enter two times just to just to give yourself some empty space like that here I'm gonna write a little bit of basic code because after all this class is part two where we need to talk about intermediate and advanced stuff and so we need to type the the less than symbol that says shift comma and then p and then greater than that's shift period so these angle brackets mean this is a little bit of code HTML code this is a new paragraph just like you had a paragraph for the email a paragraph for the subject and the way this works is p blah 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 and then slash p so we'll get to that in a moment here we're asking your telephone should we make this required or not for people yes okay let's make it required so we'll write here required then going back to the previous example we'll write the code less than br space slash greater than that creates a break it shows this text and then break the line to the next line the next thing so that break is sort of like press enter like show this enter on the next line show that press enter press uh, space one time and we're asking for a telephone so we've got this field that we can request a telephone number so click tell and here it says okay now here's something more user-friendly instead of code would you like the field to be required um, do I need that phone number required yes I'll leave that this name here can be anything we'll just leave it alone for the moment default value do you want there to do you want something to appear in the box before the person fills in the number we'll leave that alone we'll leave all of these alone basically just click insert tag at the bottom right it's right here at the top tell you've got text email URL tell So then what happened is it added the code here. Square bracket, tell, asterisk, the name of that box. And then to finish it, like on the previous field, we'll write space, angle bracket, slash, p, angle bracket. That's one space and the other one's a four space. No. Um, you know, that's just to line it up. I just put one space to to spread it out there. HTML code usually doesn't quite care about spaces unless it's really important. And as you learn HTML, you'll know when it's important. But here it's not because uh, 
whatever amount of space here, it doesn't really matter. It's just that here's this text and here's this view. <coughs> On the top right, let's click Save. So it's hard to visualize, I know, but once we actually show it on screen, it'll look like a form. But this, as we saw, it has over one million installations, it's got almost a thousand reviews, it's very highly rated, it's very updated, it's one of the most popular forms. It does require that you kind of play a little bit with code here, but it's not that complicated. This is the creation of the form. This is what's going to appear on screen and what the user is going to be asked for. On the tab at the top, we've got form, and let's jump over to mail. The point of this thing is that someone is going to fill out your form asking for these things, and then that, those results are going to be emailed to you or to multiple people. That's what this mail tab is about. Take the stuff that the person has filled in and send it to who I specify. At the top here it says, in the, in the following fields you can use these mail tags. There's your name, your email, tell 253, your subject, your message. You should see that that comes from the form tab. There's, it's asking for the person's name and it's going to save it as your name. It's asking for the person's email and it's going to save it as your email. We just created telephone and it's going to save it as what? In my case, tell 253, yes. So that's what it's telling us here. Something is being saved as your name, your email, tell, whatever, your subject and your message. So we'll get back to that in a moment. Whatever the person answers is going to get sent to whatever email is written here. It's got my, my example, but you can put your own email to fully test it. The email that I'm going to get is going to come from your name, which is what the person typed in there. And it, look, it's look, it looks like it's going to come from myself, and that's okay. This is this is something for security purposes. Don't, don't change that or else it'll tell you that might be a problem. This, the older version of the plugin didn't cause this error, but now it does, which is important. It's not that it's an error, it's just that this could be a way to do spam. This could be a way to send out emails as a spammer. So the plugin requires that your email address is also who it's coming from. Yes, that doesn't make sense, but over here, when you click reply, it will reply to the person's email. The person typed in their email, and it got saved to your email. So when I hit reply to this, it will reply to their email. I'm going to get this email, and it's going to have a subject. It'll say, Victor's Bakery and whatever the person typed for the subject. When you reply, it'll reply to the person, and then what's actually <coughs> in the body of the email, it'll say from whatever the person's name that they typed, whatever their email was, subject, whatever they wrote, message body, whatever they wrote in the message, but it's missing the telephone. We haven't told it. Also, send me the telephone that they wrote. So I'm going to go here after your message, press enter. And then click on your tell field up here and right click copy. And down on the message body, right click paste. You could. We'll see what it looks like after we test it here. 
So this is going to send me an email with whatever they wrote in the message and now the telephone number they wrote. So if your number is different, don't worry. It's your number as long as your number, whatever yours is up here, is correct. If it's not 253, that's okay. It randomly chooses numbers, it looks like. And so it's going to uh, send this, and then it's going to have a little footer that says, this email was sent from a contact form on Victor's Bakery, plus the address of, of the website, which is not a real live site. So I'm just going to delete that. doesn't matter. This is all optional. But that's not, it's not really coming from that address, so I'll just delete it. I think it won't because um, one of the things when we do go live that doesn't change are some of these like little nuances sometimes. So maybe I shouldn't be so concrete about it. I don't think it will change. I think that it'll stay the same here because I don't think it keeps I don't think WordPress keeps track of that particular item in the whole grand scheme of things. Yes. So are these uh, like variables or are they going into temporary storage in the back end? Basically, just at the moment that the person writes something and then they click send at that moment they're saved as variables and then they get sent off to the right person and they go away. So uh, you have a copy of them in your inbox, but it's not really anywhere else. What else? Exclude lines, use HTML. Don't worry about those check marks. Those defaults are fine. File attachments, don't worry about that. Mail too. This is optional, but if you set this up, this is going to be an additional mail. Often use it as an autoresponder. So if you set this up, this is going to automatically send an email back to the person that sent the email. This could be a way to save what they wrote. So notice it's going to be sent to your email, which is what the person wrote. It says it's going to come from Victor's Bakery with my address. It's going to say the subject plus what they wrote for the subject. If they reply, it'll reply to me as the administrator, and the message body will be what they wrote, which I'll need to paste in the telephone number again if you want. So if you're using mail to, that's what that's for, an autoresponder, for example. I could also make it say something like, thank you for contacting us. We'll get back to you soon. You wrote. And then it'll automatically fill in what they wrote. Let's save this. And we'll look at the next tab, which is Messages. All of these messages that are here by default are perfectly fine. You don't have to change any of this. But notice what it's doing here when the sender filled in the form and they sent it and it successfully went, it'll tell them, thank you for your message, it has been sent. If there was some sort of error that it failed, it would say, there was an error trying to send, please try again. If you're asking for, you know, something's required, but you didn't fill it in, it'll say, one or more fields have an error, please check again. So you can change any of these if you'd like. But all of these are pretty okay. There's a lot of possibilities here. So 
I'm not going to change anything here. I don't need to save it. If you change something, remember to save it. And additional settings. This is pretty advanced here. You don't really have to deal with it unless you want advanced things to happen. Um, and you can click on additional settings to find more information. So the only thing we needed to do was something in form and something in mail. Make sure you've saved and we'll click on the left side. Um, we'll go back to contact forms. Show me all my contact forms. And now you'll see there's the original contact form 1 which is still hanging around and there's the one I made right now and it's short code. Contact form 7, ID 57, title, main contact. So that code we need to add somewhere to our site. For the moment, we'll put it in our, I think we've got an about page. We'll make a contact page a little bit later. Yeah, we've got an about us page. We'll put it in the about us page for, for the moment. And the way this will work is, while you're looking at your forms here, you want to select the code for the main contact form, select it and copy it. Main contact, yeah, that's the form we made. So I'm copy that. And then we'll go over to our pages. We will edit the About Us page. We've got some placeholder gibberish there, I guess, so I'll delete that and paste. Well, whatever you called yours. Oh, we, got, we just only have one? Only have one. No, we had the default one and then we made a new one. Oh, but okay. if you have just one, try using that one. Preview if you'd like, and then it'll show it. So you see this code here, it's like a placeholder. It's a short code. It's a placeholder. Um, it's a placeholder to, to then show something more complex. So after I paste it, I'm going to update visit site. Go to About Us. You should see the form there. So I've got this contact form. If I simply click send without doing anything, one or more fields have an error. Please check and try again. This field is required, this field is required, this field is required. I'm going to fill in a name, I'm going to fill in an email, phone number, subject. Uh, there should be. Let me let me confirm in one moment. Oh. And I will click send. And I did this on purpose, but it says one or more fields have an error. And I back up. It says this email address entered is invalid. And if I put my mouse on it, please include an at in the email address. Okay, so I did this one on purpose, and that I wrote a wrong email. But let's say write the correct email and let's say for the phone number I write um, 
for 9, 988 dash 742x. And I'll send that. One or more fields have an error. The telephone number is invalid. So, um, it doesn't like dots there. Most people don't use dots anyway. Let's see, like that. And so it took that one. Now, there was an error trying to send your message. Please try again. That one is expected. That big error is expected. Why do you think? It's not on a live site. It's not on a real .com, .net, .org, whatever. It's on localhost. It's not a really fully set up server. I was just showing examples of how this could fail if you don't fill in the form properly. This is not a very good error message, but that's what it's telling you here. Sometimes some things don't work perfectly from localhost. This is one of them. So once we are able to put this online for real, then it should all work properly. And I know because I've done this for half a dozen clients or more and uh, recently, and they it, using this form, and it works because they've got a live site. This is as far as we can go with this thing until we put it up live, but that's the concept. Yes, it does need a little setup. You need to write a little code, add that short code, but it's one of the most highly rated forms. There's a bunch of other ones, of course. You might have found a different form. Check what the ratings are, how recently it was updated, what people's opinions are. This is the one I use a lot. And again, there's other ones. And if the other one works fine for you, then it works great. It's the perfect form. Um, any general questions on Contact Form 7? Okay. Yeah, we'll do that right after the break because it doesn't make sense to put it in about us. We should have a we should have a contact page. We'll do that right after the break. Uh, so we'll take a break. It's uh, 145. We'll be back at 155. We'll fix up our contact form a little bit more. We'll talk about Jetpack and a few other things.